can use a nine step by yourself, but also you need to diffuse the nine step into the organization. How do you diffuse this methodology into the organization? John? Yes, well, one of the most important things is what we've just spoke about, which is it's important to, to select the right project. Uh -huh. If teams get too bogged down uh, in the early going, they'll become demotivated and they feel frustrated by the process. And therefore, achieving it uh, at least once and showing other people in the organization that it can be done and that it does help accomplish important work, as Bob's work did, is very important. How about Bob? I, I agree with John. I think success breeds success. And in our case, although I was the only one trained, the project had very high visibility, particularly with senior management. Mm. So the other members of the team were very anxious to learn the process uh -huh. and to use the process. And so in a sense, we did just-in-time training. Oh, maybe apply, then study, or apply, then run is a good methodology yes. to diffuse this methodology into the organization. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. Nine step is a scientific problem solving methodology as well as seven steps. So you need a real skill okay, and follow the process. That's the most important. Secondly, and I suggest to you to combine seven steps and nine steps. Bob already spoke to you when they when the Bob selects an alternative, he said, we, I use the seven steps. So he combined the nine steps and the seven steps. Also, you, when you use the seven steps, when you implement the solution, you can apply the nine steps. So both steps should combine. Of course, you can use separately, but it is more powerful to combine the, those two methodologies. Thirdly, I say, again, I want to emphasize the skill. Okay. Once you apply to your real problem, then you understand what is my weakness, and you learn more. Then apply. Then you get some more skill. So the skill is necessary to understand, to be proficient for the scientific problem-solving skill. I want to speak about uh, proactive improvement. But before going to the proactive improvement, let's uh, review four revolution in the management thinking. As you know, we, uh, TQM has a four revolution in management, customer focus, continuous improvement, and the total participation, and the societal networking. So, we are talking about the continuous improvement. As you see, the continuous improvement is a problem-solving process. And I already introduced the WB model. I hope you remember it. WB model is here. Okay. There are two, level of, two levels, level of thought, level of experiences 
and the problem solving is up and down process. Okay? And there are three improvement, con control, and reactive, and proactive. So we are talk focused on the proactive improvement today. Then what is a proactive improvement? Proactive improvement is here. We come to here up to now. Yes. Then, but we don't know which way we should go. Okay. For example, we want to uh, develop the new product, but we are not so sure what type of uh, products customer really want. Another example is a strategic decision making. There are several opportunities. Which opportunity may give, the, give us a great benefit? So G is uh, issue is a proactive improvement. If the company do not focus, do not have the good in proactive improvement, company cannot get a good profit. Because the control is maintain the current situation. And the reactive improvement is decrease the defects and decrease the mistake, etc. Decrease the cost. But if the company really wants to get some more money, more sales, you need a proactive improvement. So the proactive improvement is one of the most important improvement issues, as well as maintenance, control, and reactive improvement. So let's focus to the proactive improvement. So back to the uh, WB model here. What are the unique feature of the proactive improvement? It exists in the front end of the proactive improvement. Please look this one. Sense the problem, okay? Then, but you don't know what is the real problem is. So it's very vague and fuzzy. So explore and think about, explore what is the problem. Then collect the data and formulate. Then you can understand what is the real problem is. If I describe more precisely, more detail in this process, you need a new approach compared with a reactive improvement. Okay. So please look at this diagram. Sense the problem, then you need a new approach I call the fishbowl approach. And also Kawakita, he is the inventor of the KJ method describe more detail of the new approach. We call the five principles. And under the, this new approach, we apply the unstructured survey method. Then we get the new data, data one. This is not a numeric data, rather than the language data or image data. Then, after we collected such a new type of data, develop insight into the collected data. And next, finding the hidden new structure. Once you understand the new stru hidden structures, you can focus on vital few issues. Then, you can decide the improvement on the focused issues. Then go to the next step. So I want to explain to you more details of the details of each process, starting from the fishbowl approach. Fishbowl approach is a new approach. Okay. Here is a fishbowl. You can see the fish from outside. Can you? Then many people misunderstand. They say, 
I, we can understand the fish from outside. Some researcher create objective measure and try to measure the movement of the fish from outside. Objective measurement is a logical hypothesis. But be sure, we are now in proactive process. We have no hypothesis. Rather, we want to create a new hypothesis. For example, we don't know what exactly customer really wants. We want to find out something new, latent requirement of the customer. We have no hypothesis. What should we do? Only way we can do is just take our time, just take our shots, and jump into the fishbowl by yourself. Like this, jump into the fishbowl and swim with the fish, and try to understand what is a fish by intuition rather than logic. You may think about, I understand something new with the fish. You now jump out from the fish board. Then think about what the fish is. I'm sure you can get some insight of the fish. Now you can create a new hypothesis. Then you understand something new about your fish and customer. Jiro Kawakita, inventor of the KJ method, said there are five principles for collecting the data one, language data. He said, first principle is here. 306 degree view. Second one is a stepping stone agenda. Third one is by chance opportunities. Fourth, trusting intuitions. Number five, qualitative, not quantitative data. These five principles very much well describe the my fishbowl approach. 360 investigate perspective. This is very important because we don't know the problem and we don't have the any hypothesis. So we have to see the problem within a 360 view. Suppose there is a problem here. If you see the problem only by this direction, you have the hypothesis. But we don't know, the, we don't have the any hypothesis. We have to see the problem through the different viewpoint. One of the, my friends, uh, he is a good journalist. He told me that good journalist always see the problem through like this. Go around, around the problem and just try to describe the different viewpoint. This is a 360 investigation. Okay. Second, stepping stone agenda. Okay. We don't know the real problem. Okay. Therefore, we cannot decide the rigid concrete uh, schedule or a process to collect the data. Once you visit some customer and ask something, then he said, oh, if you really want to interest such an issue, please go to the visit to the other guy. So he, you have to jump into the new persons, those who know very well about the issues. So, you should be flexible, okay? 
It is the same as crossing the stream. You jump from here and to think about what is the next stone. And this we call the stepping stone agenda. Number three principle by the Kawakita is a by chance. Okay. I often ex have an experience of the, this kind, this principle. I concentrate some issues. Then data, very good data, comes to me by chance. But I think uh, chances is n not really chance. My sensitivity is focused. Then I can find out the new data, even I cannot see before. For example, I went to the China last October, and I have no interest before I went to the China uh, in the last year. But after I went to the China, wh when I see the newspaper or magazine, I, all the news and uh, topics related to China comes to my eyes. And, oh, there is a, just news. All the new stock is appeared in the uh, New York market, stock market, from the China, etc., etc. So these new information is coming by chance if you are concentrated and sensitive enough to the problem. Okay. So this is number three issues. Then next is the intuitive capability. Very famous mathematician and philosopher Poincaré said, it is by logic that we prove, but it is by intuition that we discover. Okay? I want to discover something new about the fish. If I have a, some hypothesis, this is, we can apply the logical objective measurement, but we don't know what the fish is then my intuition is very important to, to see the fish. Then therefore, it is necessary to jump in and intuitively understand what the fish is. Okay? So in t we have to believe more about the intu intuitive capability rather than the logical way of thinking. Of course, I think logic is important to prove it. Okay. We have to have the two capability, intuitive capability and logic. Both are necessary. But when you apply the proactive improvement, Intuitive capability is more important. The fifth principle of the Kawakita is uh, correct qualitative data, not quantitative data. This is really important. Many people think about that. We need uh, quantitative data, numeric data. But it is not true for the proactive improvement. We need a specific personal experience. Even if it is okay in a once, okay, if it is a symbolic case, we have to correct such a symbolic, critical, important cases. Diversity is very important. Not on number of data. There is a very interesting research, Kawakita, by the Kawakita, and also the Griffin and Hauser. Those are independent uh, research. They found that Here is a number of 
widget, for example, widget to the customer, and number of new data. Then, now, if you visit um, many customers, of course, new data coming out. But about 70% of the new data can, you can get only 12 visits. And 90% of the data you can get only 20 visits. Hamakita and Griffin and Hauser is independently found these facts. So the diversity is important and not the number of samples. This is a characteristic of proactive data. Uh, I said data one here. So I hope you understand some uh, principle of the new approach. I said fishbowl approach and the Kawakita's five principles. Under this approach, now you go to the collect the data by unstructured survey method. There are three important methodology you can apply to the proactive improvement. One is participant observation. Okay. Second, process observation and open-ended question. Participant observation is exactly a fishbowl approach. You participate with a fish, jump into a fish, and participate with a fish. This is a particip participant observation. This kind of approach is often used in the real marketing. For example, Japanese automobile company want to export their automobile to the United States. Many engineers and marketing people stay in the United States and live in the United States and rent a car and bought a car and live with the United States. This is a kind of participant observation. Secondary, process observation. Participant observation needs a lot of time and a lot of effort. So, in order to save the time, you visit to the place your machine is located and ask the operator, oh, why you do this way of operation? What is about your uh, feeling about using the, my machine, etc.? Observe the, your products on the site and inquire. Ask them what is good, what is wrong. This is a process of observation and open-ended questions. Okay. Uh, there are two types of questionnaire. This is one of the examples of the questionnaire, and I collected in the, one of the hotel I stayed. Okay. Was your reservation handled promptly, efficiently, etc.? This is questions about the uh, quality of service in a hotel. This type of question is a, we call the closed question because the answer is closed. Okay? And items are already defined. This says uh, they have the hypothesis. Reservation is promptly, should be promptly, and courtesy, uh, efficiently, etc. And guest room must be clean, etc. These are kind of hypotheses, but 
we, we really want to know what really the customer feel and what the really customer has complained. Then open-ended question is like this. Did you have any problems or concerns during your stay with us? It's open-ended. Then customer can say anything what he or she had experienced. This we call the open-ended questions. I want to add one more about the open-ended questions. When you ask the open-ended questions, you have to explore the 360-degree view. Okay. You, I hope you rem still remember the Kawakita's first prin principle, 360-degree. Okay. Open-ended question should include four dimensions. Number one, past weakness. Okay. What was wrong? What are the complaint? What are the difficulty in the past? That is the first one. Then, current consideration. If you select a hotel, what kind of criteria do you apply? Or, this is the second. Number three is a future question related to the future. If you, what kind of new service do you want in the hotel? Like that. In addition to this past, present, and the future, you have to collect the images. What image do you have in my hotel? Well, I s spoke about this process, exploration process. You feel the problem, but problem is not clear. Then we apply the new approach, fishable approach. Then apply the unstructured survey method. Yes, I spoke about the uh, unstructured survey method, participant observation and the process observation and open-ended questions. This methodology is uh, very, very effective. Yeah. Let me show the one example. Uh, former uh, CEO of the Motorola, Mr. George Fisher, came to the Boston and gave the speech to our Center for Quality Management. And uh, he said, five principles of customer vegetation. When the company starts a TQM, it is a better to start a customer visitation. He said, number one, CEO must start. A second, when you visit the customer, not to sell, just listen to what the customer says. Number three, key questions. Only two key questions. Ask key questions. Why does customer like the com my company? Why does customer not like my company? He said, just ask these two key questions. Number four, meet line people, not uh, hire senior managers, rather meet line people. Number five, he said, meet toughest customer. This is a George Fisher's five principle. This methodology, this principle exactly fit to the unstructured survey method. Let's say, participant observation. Okay. CEO must start. CEO must participate to the survey. He must jump into the fishbowl. Okay. And he has to listen. Okay. And he has to meet right people. This is all participant survey. Second, open-ended questions. 
Why does customer like? Why does customer not like? This is completely open ended question. And also, not ask the closed question. Listen. Then, process observation. Meet line people. Okay. Not just ask, just go to the on site. This is a process observation. And this last one, meet the toughest customer. If you meet the toughest customer, unhappy customer, they give the more good information. So this contribute to all. Therefore, I say, this three unstructured survey method is a very, very powerful method for the proactive improvement. Unstructured survey method. Then, collect the data. Then after you collect the data, now formulate the problem. First step of the formulation is develop insight into collected data. There are two ways to get the insight of the collected data. First is the semantics, apply the semantics. I already explained about the semantics. For example, uh, Customer says, I hate the service in your hotel. This is a data, language data. But this is not so clear. Then, if you understand what happened, when it happened, where, who, how, then you can get some more insight of the, what the customer wants to say, for example. I hope you remember this slide in the, my semantics lessons. What happened? I was kept waiting before checking in when on January 11th, 1993. By whom? Okay. For how long? For 15 minutes. These are insight. Okay. Now I want to show the explain the importance of the image. Let me sh show. Customer says, I need a travel bag more easy to carry. Okay? I need a travel bag more easy to carry. But there are several images. If you combine this kind of language data into the images, suppose one image is here. Oh, here is a very, very heavy. Uh, I cannot carry this heavy bag. Okay? Very heavy. This is one image. Okay. So then this kind of new uh, bag appears. Weird. But heavy is one image. But another image. I need a travel back more easy to carry. Suppose I have this kind of big travel back. It is very difficult to get into the airplane. The, if, you, uh, if you travel with, by the first class, that's okay. But I already travel with the economy class. So I cannot carry in such a uh, back in the economy class. That there are, the rise of the uh, between the seat is too, too narrow. So this kind of voice of customer must combine with the image. Then you have get some more diverse new ideas. If I summarize the process of the here, develop insight into collected data, the real meaning of here is here. Combine language data and image data. This is the input. Okay? And add 
your creativity and new insight. The next step is uh, finding hidden new structure. Then you can get a new idea. Then how to find the hidden new structure? This is the key of the formulations. Let me explain here. You have the many data. These data are good insight. Okay. Then after collected this kind of data, you make the structure means the diagram. There are different diagrams according to the different type of problems. So far, we have different type of problems. For example, what is a problem? This is one type of problem. You don't know what type of problem. You want to define the problem. And second type of problem is why does the problem occur? Find out the causes, real causes. The another type of problem is uh, how to solve. Then next is uh, which solution should we choose? Then next type of problem is uh, when to schedule. And next one is uh, if something happened, then what should we do? Like a if, then. So we have, a TQM has a different type of methodology and different type of diagram according to this type of problems. KJ method is very useful to define the problem. What is a problem? Then causal relation diagram is useful to s illustrate the why the problem occurs. And tree diagram is good how to solve and create a solution. Which so solution should we choose? Matrix diagram is very useful. And arrow diagram, arrow diagram is useful for the type of this problem. And if then type of problem. This type of problem often happens in uh, negotiation or sales process. Process decision program chart is useful. Let me show the what type of uh, diagram. KJ method is like this. Okay. There are many elements and show the mapping of the problems. Then causal relation di diagram is here. Why it happens, the causes, and why this happens, cause and result, cause and result. Then three diagram is here. In order to solve the, this problem, there are two ways. And you can break down the more detailed solution. Then matrix diagram is here. There are two categories and correlate each other. And arrow diagram is here. Start from here and to the end here. How, make, how to make the schedule. Okay. Then next is the process decision program. If something happens, what should we do? This is a way find the hidden new structures. Once you make the, this kind of structures, we clearly understand the structure um, of the problem. Then after you find the structures, you can focus what part of the problem is the most important and critical. Mm -hmm. Then decide improvement on the focused issues. So 
I explained G's process for the proactive improvement. In a summary, I can show the one diagram, how the proactive improvement goes on. Start from the invisible issues, okay? We just sense the problem, so we don't know the problem. The problem is invisible, okay? Next, we ap apply the fishbowl approach, new scientific approach. And also we apply the unstructured survey method in order to collect the language and the image data. Then we get the data. This is a new type of data compared with the numeric data. Then next is a insight into the data. Find out the latent meaning of the data. And create a new structure applying the G's methodologies. And focus it. Then we can create a new idea and the concept. This is a story and the process of the proactive improvement. So in order to do the, this proactive improvement, first you need the, your creativity. Okay. And also you need a new approach and methodologies for the proactive improvement. Now it is time for you to know the real example of the proactive improvement. How the proactive improvement apply to the real world. We want to show it by the one of the great examples of the new product development. about the pro process of the proactive improvement. Now it is time to show the real example of the proactive approach. There are many, way, many areas to apply the proactive improvement, but today I want to introduce an application toward new product development. There are uh, long process of the new product development and the quality assurance of the product. Start from the market and identify the invisible requirement and plan the products. Then create the concept of the product. Then design it and create a prototype. Then prepare for the mass production. Then if you ready for the mass production, come to the mass production. Then after the production, sales and get uh, another information from the market. But one of the most important uh, element is a first step. How to create a new idea, a new concept of the product. Center for Quality Management and uh, also the uh, member company and Gary Virtual develop the new methodology we call the concept engineering to
focus to the first step for product planning. So this is uh, one of the good examples apply the proactive improvement toward the new product development. I want to introduce uh, Richard Painting from the Boss Corporation. He is going to explain you the details of the new product development. Thanks, Soji. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is to go over the development of a ceiling speaker product. And in the drawing here, you can see uh, up in the top section of it a high-performance ceiling speaker in a typical application. And uh, here you see that product. Uh, we will take a look at uh, some of the features of this uh, product versus its new replacement over here. Uh, the old product was uh, 13 inches in diameter and looks like a uh, speaker. The new product is 8 inches diameter in diameter and looks like an architectural feature. It uh, blends right back into the aesthetic of the building. The other key items uh, that this uh, new speaker had to do was that it had to be a very easy to install. Uh, and we see that with the old speaker, screw installation was required. With the new speaker, no fasteners are required. In some cases, the old speaker was a two-man install uh, in closed ceilings. Uh, the new speaker is always a one-man install. Uh, installation kits, believe it or not, came in separate boxes from the uh, speakers. And if the quantities weren't correct, you had a real problem. With the new speakers, everything is in one box to ensure installation. Next uh, situation was regulatory. Uh, and with the new speaker, it has very easy installation of the uh, earthquake uh, cable assembly. And uh, it also has a plenum uh, certification uh, which means that it can be put in a plenum and not uh, cause problems with fire codes. We're going to start with a very quick run through new product development process and I'll quickly run through the whole diagram here and then we'll come back and go through each of the steps individually in some detail. Starting up here, uh, we usually have an idea of the product category that we are interested in, and in our case, it was ceiling speakers. Uh, what we did was to put our team together, and our team uh, needed first to uh, be trained in the interviewing process. And that was uh, some two days of training, and we did a, a study case, which was uh, based on a uh, coat. From there, we went through, we interviewed our customer base. From the interview data, we went back and translated that data into uh, requirements. From there, we went through and we made a KJ structure of the uh, customer requirements, and this gave us an overview of the, the total structure of requirements. From there, into concept generation, where we generated a large number of concepts. From the concept generation, we went into a Carnot analysis. This was to get feedback from the marketplace and to prove uh, which of the concepts was most acceptable in the marketplace and we could move forward. Uh, coming back then from our data from the Carnot analysis, we went back into solution selection, uh, this being verified uh, with the Carnot data, up to prototype, where we assembled the most uh, satisfying uh, aspects of our concepts over here into a prototype. The prototype then was field tested uh, the problems with the field test were data down at data three. Coming back, we then uh, did evaluation of the prototype against the specification requirement, and then from there made the corrections and built a final prototype. Starting back over here with interviewing the trainer or trainer training. The process is critical because if in fact people don't know how to interview correctly, then it's a case of gigo, garbage in, garbage out. The rest of the process is null and void. Uh, it is very critical here to learn 
not to ask leading questions. Very, very difficult for an engineer or a marketeer because we already think we know what the answers are and we tend to ask questions that lead people to the answers that we want. Uh, what we did here what in the training process was we started off with something that was not something we had experience with, which was a winter coat, because had we dealt with speakers which we knew, people would have been on autopilot rather than learning the new process of interviewing. So we did a winter coat and we actually interviewed staff, found out what they required, designed one, went back, did the confirmations, etc. This was a process of about two to three days. Uh, then what we did, uh, we actually started off on actual product interviews. We did a product guide or a product interview guide and this guide is just a series of generally open-ended questions that guide the interview in the direction that you want to go but are not specific. This is not uh, a specific point-by-point -point set of questions that you ask. We went and we started with our area managers, the Northeast manager, Southwest, etc., for Bose distribution. And these were internal people so that if we made mistakes, uh, it wasn't quite so bad. So we started with them, we did our interviews, and we honed our technique, we uh, corrected our questionnaire, and the next people we went to see were our distributors. And we did the same thing with our distributors, then on to installers, and then finally uh, to end-using customers so that we started off with uh, people that uh, wasn't a big risk if we made some uh, gaffes or mistakes and then worked through to the uh, end customer. What happened then, we wound up with all our data one here and this was our data uh, in uh, verbatim transcripts of the customer interviews. Okay, Richard, uh, that's a very interesting. So the most important for the proactive, start from the interview, okay? What is the secret for a successful interview? Yeah, several things, Sergi. One, of course, is the training, as we oh. said, that you must have experience yes. before you go out with customers, particularly in not asking leading questions uh -huh. and in having a broad stepping stone approach so that you can be flexible, that you have an interview guide, yes. but it's not a script, uh -huh. right? It's not a detailed script, it's just general area, and then let the, let the interview take you where it might go. You might discover something new and interesting that okay. you hadn't thought about. Okay, training is the most important. Training, very important. And what, what kind of questions uh, do they do to the customer? Right. Uh, for instance, what we do um, to get them talking, we say, uh, for instance, we might ask an image question or a, yes. a detailed question first. And we say, look, if you were installing uh -huh. a ceiling speaker uh -huh. and you had a video camera, you were focusing on this, taking pictures, what are the images you would see of an installation? See. Tell me about this installation. Uh -huh. And what, look, what is this guy doing on the ladder? Well, the image is uh -huh. that he's got a great big heavy speaker in one hand, a mouthful of screws, He's reaching for a tool, he's got dirt in his eyes, okay. he's trying to get this thing in the roof and he's cursing those company because he can't install this thing. Okay. That's the image. Image data is important. Image very important. Also, maybe you need uh, past, uh, complaint, and the present, and yes. future. Past, present, future. What are the past problems? Uh -huh. What are present issues? Uh -huh. What would you like to see in the future? Uh -huh. And they are good areas for questions. The other thing that you must do is to make sure you have a good balance uh -huh. of people that you're talking to. I see. But uh, for instance, uh, it might be uh, East Coast, uh -huh. Central, West Coast, then uh, dealers, uh -huh. distributors, installers, and end customers, so that you have a matrix okay. by area, by area of use, by concern uh -huh. with this product, uh -huh. that you get a full picture uh -huh. from the interviews of the environment in which the product must pass through and eventually live in. Okay, I understand. Let's go next step. Having done that, uh, we have got our data as we spoke. Uh, the data is here. What we must do now is to take our image data, to take the voices of the customer that we have just collected, and translate those through into customer requirements. Here we have a diagram 
of that translation process. And this really is the heart of what is going on here. Here you see the uh, raw data uh, from the uh, customer interviews, and it is, has two uh, components. One is the direct voices of the customer, and others are the images that we spoke of, for instance, the installer on top of the ladder. We then take a look over here, and we take a voice, and we match that voice against an image. And in our example here, one of the voices was that it take a minimum time to install a speaker with no special tools. And one of the requirements of the install is that there be a guy wire that goes up to the frame of the building and must connect to the speaker. And this is for the uh, Los Angeles earthquake specifications. Here we look at the key issues. The key issue here is safety. Secondary key issue is quick, uh, minimum time to install, and install with no tools. These are the key items that we have just extracted from these two points. We then synthesize these into a clear, coherent customer requirement. And our requirement here was installation of safety cable can be done by hand with shorter time than uh, current installations. This is the heart of the proactive uh, improvement. And what is the benefit from your experience uh, through the, this process? The benefits are, are really great. Um, you get your team working together. Oh, I, uh, I had a unique situation where I had some oh. older engineers oh. who uh, were very experienced. Uh, and young engineers that had no experience. And this was a way to share experience and for the younger guys to actually learn to respect the experience of the, of the older players. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing it did was that in this process of going through and synthesizing this together, what happened was language gets swapped and shared and has to be explained. The team learns to communicate much mm -hmm. better. They understand mm -hmm. much better what is going from one to the other. And uh, also the creativity. Creativity is, is another thing because, of course, one of the things that is very important is for creative people to understand the problem. I see. If they don't understand a problem, no amount of creativity will give you the solution. Mm -hmm. So uh, a process like this of, of the translation is an enabler for creativity. Okay. And it enhances creativity greatly. Okay. Then let's going back, uh, of course, uh, we are talking now uh, about going through and we're doing the generation of our KJ structure. And here we're structuring together uh, our KJ, and we'll look at this over here. Here you see our customer requirement KJ. And uh, I'll just go through the higher level uh, blue labels here to give you an idea of the construction, and then we'll shoot up to the Conclusion. Uh, the initial question was, what are the key customer requirements for ceiling mount speakers? And as you can see, here we have a Bose can provide me exactly what I need to do the job. Competitive bids can be submitted. Good sound everywhere in the listening space. This meant that it wasn't very loud in one space and quiet in another. And over here, the system is designed for compatibility with industry standards. That meant sizes of holes in roofs, etc. Installation. And our conclusion up here, in putting this all together, was with competitive pricing, ease of installation, and demonstrably superior acoustic performance, we can close a sale. And with that in mind, what this did was provide a credible, clear map of the requirements for the design team. And on the basis of that, they could move forward to start their concept generation over here. That was our next phase. How you create so many good concept? Yep, let me explain. Uh, what we do, Sergi, okay. is that uh, we break uh, the, the requirements down into areas that we see. For instance, 
Uh, we have mechanical requirements like ease of installation. Oh. We have requirements uh, for industry standard holes and we have requirements for excellent yeah. acoustic performance. So let me go through the models that I have oh, here I and we can uh, take a look at it. First off, we had a requirement for uh, excellent uh, ease of installation. And the first thing that came to mind, of course, is the way lighting retracts up into roofs on the spring. Oh. And you see many, many springs oh, here and ideas oh. that we went through. Oh. These are out of the archive. First yes. concept, not particularly effective for oh. a product of this weight I see. and didn't allow ease of installation. The mechanical engineers mm -hmm. then evolved another concept, mm -hmm. and this concept was very, very clever. Mm -hmm. Let me just show you what this does. These come down and they preload, like so. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is to hang oh, your can here, pull down, and let it back up. So it makes for very easy nice. installation. Here you see a mechanical model that was related to this product, and as you can see, it's completely hollow. It's in no way intended to be a working speaker, but it allowed us to have the mechanical engineers develop the installation kit in parallel to what was happening over here. Uh -huh. So this got time to market. So you need a good cooperation. Good cooperation with the people, uh. and having clear uh, requirements divided up into areas of uh, installation, mechanical, uh, of acoustic performance. It made it easy to divide this, oh. spread it to the engineers, and therefore get a very fast parallel action oh. I see. for getting the development done. Now here, for instance, we were talking about uh, the requirement oh. to fit an industry size hole. Well, we started with an industry size oh. product. Oh. It's a light. It required two of them. They're joined together with putty, oh. As you can see, oh. very crude, but this little prototype proved that we could build a product like this and get the performance we wanted mm. in an industry standard hole with very little mm. effort. So the key point for the concept generation is a clear statement of, clear the statement of requirements, mm. and that allowed us to mm. divide it, get very fast parallel action, mm good teamwork because yeah. the concepts had been developed yeah. together. Everyone understood how all of the concepts in our yes. map here yeah. fitted all of the concepts together into a whole. So the people developing this understood the problem this guy had. Okay, very good. And this guy understood the problems well, they had. So okay. really it was a synchronized development. Okay. And you can see acoustic development again. They were optimizing their part, not yet considering mm -hmm. what had to happen over mm -hmm. here developing the speakers, and then in fact very serious consideration mm -hmm. of what relates to mm -hmm. here. This part here, Soji, is, a, is what's called an SLA part, mm -hmm. stereo lithography. This was developed from a CAD file from the mathematical design mm -hmm. to fit this can. As you can see, here is where the synthesis began to mm -hmm. come together. Mm -hmm. There's the fit. Oh, good. And then here's the actual final part, so you can see how close Mm. It really was. This was done very early. I see. This then matched to a, a fully sealed version of this. Uh, then we could test our theory uh, and get the performance checked straight away. And then we have a model over here that uh, behind you. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You could pull that one across. Okay. You can see how we brought all this together and the team brought this together and said, okay, ease of installation must be aesthetically appealing. See what we're doing uh -huh. here is just install the earthquake cable. Uh -huh, yes. Right. Would you like to try to uh, actually okay. install this one? Oh, that easy. We have just gone through looking at uh, the concept generation process. And the next step was to move down to our Kano analysis.